name is Dave Thompson. I wrote the black box software and this is an overview of the functionality of the, of the software. We have other videos that go into s the details of the specific sections. This is just going to be a brief overview of everything. So this main window here you see is where the GPS graphs will be shown once you load a log, but right at the beginning it shows some basic instructions if you've never used the software. So first thing first, to open up a log, you click here, select a log, opens it up, and it'll change this view to a map of where I was when I did this. Obviously this is a drag strip, uh, which is where you should be using the software the only place you should be doing quarter mile runs beside private roads. Now you can open up more than one log so that you can compare the information from each of them. If we open up another log, this is from the same uh, night, uh, this is another run, you can actually select between the logs like this using the radio buttons. The I buttons on the left allow you to open up what is a, oh, it opened up a little bit off screen here, a log information window. This allows you to enter a picture here. You can just click on that area and it allows you to select a picture and add that to your log, a title for the picture, a log description, where you were, what you're doing, anything about your log, and the mods of your car, and then which car you're using. And then click Save to save it. Graphs, those are used to allow you to show, uh, for example, here's boost pressure, show a specific engine, GPS, or acceleration bit of information for a specific log. We have two logs open, so I can either choose log one or log two to show boost pressure pressure for one or two. We'll do one. I also showed up off screen. And here's the boost pressure for that first run. We can zoom in by dragging with your mouse a window around an area. And we'll zoom in. You can see first gear, first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. And there's fifth gear. You can add other information by just checking boxes here. Once again, this information will be covered a little bit more in depth uh, in the graph section. Then we have playback. This is allows you to play back the information from the log real time. That's when this number right here, which is the playback speed, is at 1. That means real time playback. You can increase or decrease the number here by small amounts, or you can click the fast forward rewind to jump uh, in larger number increments. You can also select right here where you want to move the current position to be. So this way you can jump all the waiting I had at the beginning and staging and jump right to before I jump or I launched and then click, click play and you can see from that point me go forward. As you can see the data uh, or the graph or the movement of the car looks a little bit jumpy. Turns out that the GPS information recorded is only once every second, so that's what you see is those one second increments on average between the data points uh, captured. Uh, accel acceleration data and all the engine data is captured much, much quicker than this, and so you'll have fluid uh, or continuous information flow from all of those. Uh, when you're in drag race mode, I actually interpolate values in between each of those single data points to make it a little bit smoother on playback, but that's only during drag mode, which we'll get to in a second. So there's playback. And the next part is acceleration times. This shows if it detected that you, um, if it detected a 0 to 60 or quarter mile run, it will show the times here. And how to make sure that it detects those times are to come to a complete stop before you uh, drive, before you do your run, and make sure you start the log while, uh, ideally while the car is stopped. It's okay if you start it beforehand, but as long as you come to a stop, for at least, I'd say, five, six, seven seconds uh, before you do your run. Leave it at a complete dead stop. That's how it triggers that you've done a run, is it finds a, a zero mile per hour period and then a hard acceleration away from that. And then it'll calculate out your zero to 60 times and quarter mile if you actually kept pushing all the way through a quarter mile. And as you can see here, I got 5.2 seconds, zero to 60, 13.8 at 99.4 quarter mile. It's pretty darn close to what I actually got from the time slip doing this run, which is good information. It's good that it's accurate. And here's all the information clicking on full slip that you can get from um, the virtual time slip here, and which is all the same information you'd get from a real time slip plus a little bit of extra down here. All right, now as you can see, we have stand back detected right here and record button. That's because I have a stand back plugged in on my desktop here. 
obviously it's not connected to a car or a GPS unit or, accelerate or accelerometer, so it won't actually record any good information. It'll just be a bunch of zeros, but we can still click record here. See that it's recording. The timer's ticking. Stop it. When you click stop, it asks you where you want to save the file to. You can type in the name here and click save. And you notice it's saving to the file type of .pmp, which is performance monitoring pro processor. It's just a new file type we chose that allows you to include not only the log information, but also pictures and uh, text and, and whatnot from that log information box. And you can save your file there, and it automatically gets loaded into the next available log slot after you record. Once you're done recording, if you've got all your slots full, it'll ask you which slot you want to put it into. It doesn't mean it's going to overwrite that file, it just means it's going to unload the current file there and load yours in, into that slot after it saves the file to the hard drive. All right, well, that's the basic uh, the functionality of the software. Um, if we click on the little X here and get away from the recording window, we'll see that below it is the drag race mode. This is also what's shown by default if it doesn't detect the stand back. And what this allows you to do is to, once you have a log opened in, in slot 1 and slot 2, not 1 or 3 or 2 and, f and 2 and 3, but only 1 and 2, those two slots, and as long as both of them have quarter mile runs detected, and both of these happen to, then you can click on drag race mode on. And then it'll ask you whether you want to put it at Firebird International Raceway, and I chose that drag strip just because it's the local one, and, and I wrote the software, so I get to choose things like that. And you also get the choice of being able to transpose both your runs onto the location of log 1, wherever it was recorded, or log 2. And so that makes it so that you can borrow a log or, or get a log from a friend who's in a completely different state. You can load his log up. If they both have quarter mile runs, you can click the drag race mode button and then choose to have both your cars race at his location or your location, or obviously here in Arizona. We'll just keep that because this is all these logs actually are at the Firebird or International Raceway, so all three of these options would do the same thing. So we'll click on race, loads the three maps, and it may take you longer the first time you load that. That was very quick for me because I've actually used it a couple times here. But the first time you load it, it may ask you to load the Microsoft Live 3D environment and whatnot. You only have to do that once, and that should be pretty quick. And you see that it's put us behind the drag strip, behind the starting line. And as we click play, it puts two uh, car, icon car icons at the starting line. And then you can see they, they both launch and take off. Obviously, the right car is the one where I did the better launch. And then basically follow each other all the way up after that point. And you can see the... The playba playback is continuing over here, and I can drag the bar and move it around. Right as I dragged it, though, it got really close to the finish line and did what I call the photo finish mode, which is where it swings around to the right side and then zooms in on the finish line so you can see as the cars cross the finish line. I'll fake it and I'll move them up here. Uh, who crossed first? And you can see there that guy crossed first, and then a little bit later that guy crosses. So that's virtual drag race mode. You click stop and it, it zooms you back out and resets the view. So that's the basic functionality of the software. Hope you liked it. Give me a lot of feedback so I can make it better. And also, very important, go look at the other uh, videos that will go into depth uh, over each of these sections, especially the graphs. There's a lot that was put into the graphs, and, and most of the information you'll pull out of your driving habits and how your car is running will be from those graphs. So be sure to watch that video and to learn how to use the rest of the software. All right, thanks for your time.